Last summer, the average pitcher training a driveline baseball gained over two miles an hour of velocity, and the average hitter gained between one to two miles per hour of bat speed. Huge gains over the course of the summer. Some hitters like Travis Bazana at Oregon State gained even more. A big part of these gains came for their adaptations on the hitting and pitching sides, from tailored programs that really helped them dial in what they needed to get better at there. But a huge part of these gains also came from their adaptations in the weight room, coming through a strict, detailed assessment that gave us a full profile of what their physical adaptations were currently and how we could improve on them. Today, we're gonna to walk through our strength assessment and how we use it to tailor your strength program to you. When training for these general physical adaptations in the weight room, we wanna make sure that we're giving an athlete everything they need broadly, but tailoring it to where they currently are and how close they currently are to competition. This allows us to peak them at the right times and make sure they're staying strong and robust throughout their entire season. Big focus is combining the more subjective data, such as yearly training plan, injury history, athlete training history, and comparing that with more objective hard data, such as force plate data with absolute strength, rate of force development, and reactive strength. This comprehensive strength assessment starts with a movement screening. So in the movement screening, we're really looking at two main things. We're looking at T-spine range of motion, so your current physical access to how far you can rotate your spine. That's a huge part because we believe that structure dictates function. So if you don't have access to the range of motion you're gonna need in the swing of the throw, it's gonna be really hard to train your way out of that in the skill side. So a huge part of developing on the strength side is developing the capacity to perform a movement and then applying the adaptation in your skill. So measuring that T-spine and also measuring shoulder internal and external strength to make sure we've got some prerequisite strength and range of motion in both of those areas. Really wanna make sure that we're prepped for the demands of the sport, especially high velocity throwing. We'll also measure hip internal and external rotation, which will give us a really good idea about where you're biased to and how that could affect you in your throw or your swing. Once we're done with the movement screening, we'll move on to the force plate assessment. The force plate assessment will tell us the main few things about how you move and how you produce force as an athlete. Working at a few main things here, which is power, which is how fast you can produce force, absolute strength, which is how much total force you can produce, and reactive strength, which is how quickly you can reproduce that force. The first test we'll do in the force plates is the counter move a jump. Ready, you jump. The counter move a jump is a dynamic movement that allows us to measure the athlete's current rate of force development, which is how much force they can produce in a short window of time. The next test we'll perform is the squat jump. The squat jump is very similar to the counter movement jump in that we're trying to assess the athlete's current rate of force development, but we're doing it from a standstill. Stop. We're trying to measure the difference between how well the athlete uses the eccentric, the down portion of the jump, and create what's called an eccentric utilization ratio, which is the difference between those two. Using these two, we can get a really good profile on how the athlete produces force quickly and where we should structure their training to give them more of what they need. The last jumping test that we'll do in the force plate assessment is the 10 to 5 repeated hop test. The 10 to 5 repeated hop test involves doing 10 hops in a row, trying to spend as much time in the air and as little time on the ground as possible. This tells us a lot about the athlete's reactive strength, or like elastic capability to repeat force very dynamically. Once the jump testing has been completed, we move on to the isometric mid thigh pull. Different than traditional strength testing, the isometric mid thigh pull allows us to determine reliably and safely an athlete's absolute strength. On day two, we break all this down in our athlete meeting to discuss the results of the strength assessment. During the athlete meeting, we break down the key metrics we are looking for with each test of the assessment. Some of those key metrics are how much an athlete weighs, how high they jump and how much power they produce in the counter movement jump and the squat jump, which are some of the highest correlators to bat speed and throwing velocity, an athlete's reactive strength index, which we get from the repeated hop test, an athlete's peak force from the isometric mid thigh pull, and their strength to body weight ratio, which is an athlete's peak force divided by their body weight. After your assessment, you will get a report and your results will be compared to thousands of athletes and puts you in a percentile where you're stacked up against our higher level athletes. This report will also give you either a predicted velocity number if you are a pitcher and a predicted bat speed number if you are a hitter. We use your predicted skill numbers to determine where you should spend your training economy as an athlete. If you have a high predicted velo, but a low actual velo, we're gonna spend more time on the skill side than the strength side. 
If you have a low predictive velo and a high actual velo, we're gonna do more strength work than skill work. If you don't possess physical qualities to throw hard, it will be hard to ever throw hard, regardless of your mechanics. The assessment is just one piece, and there are many factors that go into your program, such as age, injury history, training history, when your next competition is, and what your goals are as an athlete. The combination of objective, general physical adaptation data paired with specific motion capture skill data allows us to fill in the gaps and create a robust training plan that allows you to address your lowest hanging fruit and get your highest return on investment for your training. At Driveline, we currently retest every six weeks, which gives us enough retests throughout the year to be very flexible and adaptable to where our training's going and where we need to go, but also gives us enough time in between to actually make adaptations on the things we're trying to train and get a lot better. Having this objective force play data allows you to train with confidence the things you know you need to get better at, making yourself as robust and dynamic a general athlete as possible so you can apply that to your skill and become as good as an athlete as you possibly can. This objective hard data allows our trainers to use their technical expertise to individualize your program to focus on what you need to work on the most. You've only got so much time to train your career and that window is constantly shortening. If you wanna get the most out of it, get objective data and get the best technical expertise possible to get the most out of your career.